Hey, this is Matt. Once again, just wanted to do a couple sort of smaller reviews. Films I'm not going to go too in depth on, but I could talk about for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, give or take. Uh, and one of them is the Adjustment Bureau, which is just, I had seen this when it came out, quite enjoyed it, got the DVD, but then <laughs> had not opened the DVD until now. So it's been about eight years since I've seen this, but watching it again, I still quite enjoy it. The Adjustment Bureau, directed by a guy named George Nofi, which I cannot believe this is the same guy that directed that fucking film, Birth of the Dragon. I'm like, this is the same guy? Although, granted, he wrote and directed this film, and it's based on a short story by Philip K. Dick. And you have two great actors, Matt Damon and Emily Blunt, two people I do enjoy. I uh, Matt Damon, I like Good Will Hunting, I really liked The Martian, yeah, I do think he's a solid actor. I'm not a fan of the Bourne films. He's not the problem with those movies, though. I just... The editing, the story, the action just did not do anything for me in the board. But again, he's not the problem. And Emily Blunt, I really enjoyed her, especially since, ever since I saw Edge of Tomorrow. She really impressed me in that film. And she did a good job in this as well. Also, you have Anthony Mackie, who of course would be Falcon, Falcon in the Captain America movies. He has a good sized role in this, and he it was nice to see him. A uh, Terrence Stamp, you know Zod from Superman 2. It was nice to see him in this, and it's a really interesting story, like with a good cast, competent direction, kept me interested, and involved to see what would happen next. And again, it's a really neat concept that Philip K. Dick came up with back in the day, and. This is a film that really no one talks about. It's completely forgotten. Granted, this poster isn't much. This poster is, I mean, this cover, very blasé and just nothing to it. I hope the back looks better than the front. But the concept is uh, Matt Damon is a guy going for the Senate. Things are going well, and then setback happens, so he's not going to be able to win this time. Maybe he'll win next time. And by chance, he meets this lady, played by Emily Blunt. They have fun. They really be begin to like each other, and they want to see each other. Well, then these people with these hats and they, they look like this, they come up to him and pretty much say, no, you can't. And then one thing leads to another, and I'm going to go too in-depth on everything. You come to find out that these people, there's a bit of a supernatural, religious, where your mind wants to go in, in this route. Where... Every move you make is in accordance with this master plan. And if there's any kinks or imperfections, you get adjusted by these people. And that there's a boss, whether you want to call that God or whatever you want to put it, and it's the appearance of free will without actually being free will. And this chance meeting these two had was not part of the plan, so a good chunk of the film is these guys trying to keep these two separate. Because that's not how the plan is supposed to be. You know, Emily Blanche is going to go off be your ballerina, Matt Damon. If you, if you go with her, uh, you know, this could happen, and this, that could, will happen, or she'll get hurt, or, 
you know, she won't be the most popular dancer. She'll be teaching five-year-olds, and you're not going to be president, but if you're away from her, you'll be president. Pretty much keeping these two away from each other. So it's an interesting concept. The movie does a better job explaining it than I do. But it's also a nice love story where, you know, these two really do care for each other and they do want really want to be together. And the... I don't know if I call them villains, but, I mean, technically they are, but it's nothing evil, sadistic as well. I like the fact that the, the idea where these... I don't know what you call them. Angels? Uh, I don't know how you would call this bureau of, of folks. But that they, they could go to any door and they teleport. Uh, but as long as they have this hat on, you know, that's why they wear these hats. Again, yeah, kind of a quirky, uh, interesting concept. And yeah, sort of the story about how they keep getting separated and, you know, you gotta stay on the plan. This fate is now, <laughs> I keep wanting to say Terminator. Fate is not what you make of it. And at first, you know, Matt Damon, for the most part, finds out about this and. He listens to them, but he's like, no, screw this. This you know how we feel how I feel about her, this has to be right. Maybe that's as far as I'll go into it. But I thought it was a pretty smart, interesting flick. Has some nice ideas with it. Again, an intriguing plot, interesting story, capable cast. Effie Mackey is one of these guys, but he's very, what's the word I want to say? He's very, he becomes supportive of our lead characters, uh, understanding, you know, you know, sort of you know, joins their side, so to speak. I do, it's, if you go into this for action, that's not the kind of film it is. If you go into this for where big special effects that's not this kind of movie this is not an effects movie this is not an action movie this is not a movie with fight scenes and car crashes uh the most action you get is some foot chases uh, especially the the thread where matt damon is given this by anthony mackie and the two of them are running from the bureau and they go from like uh bathroom, they open a door, then they're in a football stadium, then they open up, then they're in a subway that goes to the city. Uh, visually well done. Doesn't end on a stupid note or a downbeat note. Again, it's a, it's a nice love story mixed in with an interesting, smart, sci-fi tale that is competently directed, has a good cast. These two had really solid chemistry with each other. Again, it was also cool to see people like Anthony Mackie and Terrence Stamp in the film. And I guess I would call this a bit underrated, although it does have a good rating on IMDb, which is nice. But Again, it's a film, like the same year, you also have the source code with Jake Gyllenhaal. And I think both of these were decently reviewed and had decent box office, but they're also sci-fi films that no one ever talks about anymore. Like, no one ever mentions these films. And it's sad, because that was a pretty, pretty good year for science fiction movies. But yeah, if, if, if you read the Philip K. Dick story, if the concept interests you at all, if you know, Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, Anthony Mackie, Karen Stamp, if any of those people interest you at all, 
if you like love stories, if you like neat tastes on the sci-fi thriller aspect. Again, you're not getting action effects. And this film didn't need that, which I, I was fine with. Again, the, the cast and the story, to me, are, are the two strongest things about this. And if there has to be a three, I would add in the love story. Those are the three best things about the film. And I think the reason it does get a good Ray and IMDb is because of that. Either way, thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.